No, you have to wait till my <laughs> Just pretend like I didn't see it. Okay, so, uh, like I said, we're doing log cosine. Why is it not sitting there? So, this is another way I can use to solve for sides and angles, and I use it with two specific cases with triangles. I'll go over those in a minute. Uh, I have my standard form which is listed this way, and my alternative form, which is just rewriting the standard form. So we rearrange it so cosine is on the left, and over here, a squared is on the left. Remember, little letters, lowercase letter, lower letters, are side lengths, capital letters are angles. So the standard form is useful for solving for a side. And the alternative form is useful for solving for an angle first. Oh no, these will be given to you on the test or quiz. Um, so, one instance in which I'd want to use this is if I have three sides of a triangle given. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is use the law of cosines for our first uh, angle. Then, whenever we're using law of cosines, we only use it once, and then we switch over to law of sines. So, I always use law of cosines opposite my largest side length. Which side length is the largest on number one. B. So I am looking for an angle. Which formula should I use? Standard or alternative? Okay, and then I'm going to use the cosine B one. So then I am just plugging in my side lengths here. I have my A, which is 8, squared, plus my C value squared, which is 14, minus 2, times 8, times 14, Wait, wait, wait. I messed that up. I was confusing the bottom of that with where I was. So this should be minus b squared. 19 squared. Then the bottom goes on the... So this is the 2 times the 8 times the 14. Okay, so if I want to type this in the calculator, I want to make sure my numerator is in its own set of parentheses and my denominator is in its own set of parentheses. So here's how it should look in the calculator. So this gives me a decimal. I want to go ahead and turn it back into a fraction. So I go math and then fraction. 
So it gives me negative 101 over 224. I am rewriting this. Then how do I solve for my angle? Not divide, but you're right, I need to get rid of the cosine. Inverse cosine. So that's going to cancel out my cosine on the left and leave me with just b. And then I have cosine inverse of negative 101 over 224. Um, what does this get us on the calculator? Make sure you're in degrees. Yeah, 116.8. And then remember to write the degree symbol. If you don't write this on the quiz or the test, I will mark you off points. Angles should always have degrees. Then I need to use the law of sines. I can use whichever side I want to go find. Which one do you want me to find first, A or C? I heard C first. So I'm going to use law of sines with the angle and side length I know. So this is 116.8, and the matching side is 19. So I'm going to do 19 over sine of 116.8. And then C was the side length I heard first. So I'm going to do sine of C. Law of sines. So I had my side length of 19 for B, and the matching angle was 116.8. So those go together. And then someone told me to solve for uh, angle C. So my side length for C was 14, and then this capital C is what I'm looking for. Remember, a lot of times is what we did before spring break. Okay, then I want to go ahead and get my variable out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of c. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite this.
So then I want to go ahead and get rid of this fraction. I am going to multiply by the reciprocal. Then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. I have sine of C equals 14 sine of 116.8 divided by 19. Then I need to get rid of my sine, so I'm going to do sine inverse. Which gives me C alone. Sine inverse of 14 sine 116.8 over 19. Okay, let me get let me know when you guys have an angle. Does anyone have an angle for me yet? Mm. It should be 41.1. Oh. Okay, so questions on how I got that angle. Okay, so how do I get angle A now? No, I don't have to do law of signs. It's my third angle. So I subtract them from 180. So what do I get when I subtract from 180? Log cosines will always give you just one. Yeah, so the only time you get two triangles is when you're given two sides and then an angle after one of those sides. Any other questions here? Okay, so then the other case we can use law of cosines for is when I have an angle in between two sides. So this is something where like I have a side, an angle in between, and then another side. This is side angle side. And for this one, I will be using the standard form. So for these, you use law of cosines to find the missing side length. So you'll be given an angle, and you use that angle to find the side across from it. Okay. So on uh, number three, I want to start off by drawing my triangle. And then I want to label my pieces. So my side length B is 9, my side length C is 12, and my angle A is 25. So what side length do I want to solve for? A. So I'm going to use the standard form. 
So the a squared equals b squared 1. So I'm going to have a squared, and then my b was 9, my c was 12, and I have minus 2 from the formula, times 9, times 12, then cosine, my angle for a was 25. Mm -hmm. Oh, like that? It's like the way I had it? Oh, more? Okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm not even going to type in the right side into the calculator yet because I can take the square root of both sides to get rid of that exponent. And then once I have that, I can type in this radical into the calculator with everything and it will do all of the hard math for me. So I can go second and then my x squared button gets me the radical. If I'm using a new calculator like the one I have on the screen, the radical bar will extend as I type. If I'm using an older calculator, I just want to make sure not to close off that first parenthesis that it shows. So I'm going to have 9 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 parentheses 9 parentheses 12 cosine 25. And then I get this. The problem wants me to round side lengths to the nearest hundredth. So two decimal places for that. What is this side length? Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I'm solving a side angle side triangle, uh, when I go to find my second angle, I always have to find my shorter side length. Because if I don't, um, it might give me a triangle that doesn't make sense. So, like, the angles won't add up correctly. What is my shorter side? B. So I'm going to use law of sines to find my angle for B. So I have 5.41 for my side length for A, and then my angle there was 25. My side length for B is 9. Not yet. We will use it. So then I want to get the sine out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of b. Then I want to get rid of this fraction, so I'm going to multiply by its reciprocal, which is sine of 25 over 5.41. Now what do I want to do? Mm -hmm. 
Now I want to use my inverse sine to isolate my angle. Okay, then I just want to go ahead and type this into the calculator. Mm -hmm. So this gets us 44.7. That was B. What am I still missing? How do I find C? Okay. So I have the 25 degrees that was given to me and that 44.7 that I just found. I need to subtract those from 180. Yeah, 110.3. Okay, so when I have a side angle, side triangle, I want to use log cosines at the very beginning to find my first side length. And then I always do law of sines with the shorter side length on side angle sides. Okay, so the law of cosines is... Uh, is used to develop another area formula. This one is the square root of s times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c, where s is found by adding all the side lengths together and dividing by one half. This is useful for when we have a triangle and we are given three side lengths and we need to find our area. So I forgot to type this on the paper. The name of the formula is Heron's formula. then I just need to go ahead and plug in to solve. So I will be giving you these formulas on the test and quiz as well. So first thing I want to do here is I want to solve for s. I have 1 half, 43 plus 53 plus 72. I want to go ahead and type these into my calculator. Which gets me 84 for my s value. Then I need to go ahead and find my area, so I plug into that area formula. I have 84 times 84 minus 43 times 84 minus 53 times 84 minus 72. So then I want to go ahead and type this in the calculator. which it tells me to round to the nearest hundred, so that's two decimal places. This is going to give me 1131.89. Because it's area and because I have units, I need to rate it squared. So I have meters squared for my final answer.